Hey, Tibbs. Just uh, went and checked the rest of the bearing caps on this, and I'll show you what I got. I recorded my data. Did some plastic gauge stuff here. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, back of the engine. Um, one of these, I think this one was actually a little bit closer to four thousandths. Actually, no, excuse me, not that one. One of these was closer to three, but I put four anyways because it kind of mostly fit in the four thousandths. Um, book says no more than uh, 0.4 or four thousandths. 0 0.0045. Uh, of clearance and again one of these I think it was uh, I actually think it was this one was a little bit closer to uh, four or maybe I got it opposite I'm getting all of this dyslexic but they're pretty close within each other we got four four we got three probably closer to four that was the first one we did and then um, this one here you know, it's plus or minus, and same thing with those. So I'm gonna go on a limb and say we're okay running that. We're pretty close to our uh, spec. If we were, you know, hitting five and six on some of these, we might have a problem. But because we're close to that four thousandths on some of these, um, I'm gonna go ahead and run that as is. Otherwise, we got a nice smooth turning crankshaft it feels even all the way around I like it a lot so the next thing I want to do here is check our end play real quick and then we'll get into um, assembling pistons we got the D hull indicator uh, set up on our crankshaft here I have pried the crankshaft back as far as it'll go zeroed up my dingle end here this is zeroed out. And we're gonna pry forward the crankshaft and see how far that moves. Get that out of our way. So, how much did that? Okay. We have a bit of an operator error here. Get it right on zero and then push it forward. So what do we got? We get about six thousandths of end play. It's loading. I gotta I gotta put this manual off. Oh, oh. Okay, took me a little bit, and of course, when I flip my phone around, it takes me back to the last 480th page. Okay, crankshaft end clearance. The minimum is four thousandths, and the maximum is 17 thousandths. And as you can see, we're just a skosh past six thousandths, so we're within spec.
Before we move on to pistons, we're going to look at our rockers here, clean them up. Um, I'd actually like to uh, get some oil varnish on them. I'd like to maybe get a bucket, put these in there and clean them with some gasoline and scrub them. We'll wipe off our ball end and our actual end that goes up against the valve. You can see we got a little bit of wear. You can just barely feel it. I'm not going to be too worried about that. It's not totally wore down or anything. These are in okay shape. They're, this is your actual adjustment part, and this is what rides in the uh, uh, push rod. So here's a push rod, and this push rod would have been mated up to this one here. Yeah. It's got some good suction to it. Yeah. We're going to clean these up. I didn't buy new ones. They were cheap enough where I probably could have bought new push rods, but we'll just clean the varnish off. Um, look at the ends of them. This has got a little bit of a teat worn to it. Um, but basically what the book says, as long as this isn't pitted or really just mangled up, and same thing with this end. If this end is not split and whatnot, and it looks basically like that, um, she's ready to rock. Okay, so what I would like to do, let's see if I got the right uh, guys here. Oh no, I need the smaller ends. These are not the best snapping pliers that I've <laughs> that you can get, but guess what? That's what I got. Let's see. Okay, that was pretty easy. Got the Jesus clip off. Let's zoom me in a little bit here. Let me show you what we're working with here. We'll just slide that one off. We lost something. This one's not looking too bad. Well, I take that back. There's a little bit of some. I don't know. You guys can't see in there. There's a little bit of some weird wear in there. I can't really feel it all that much. Let's see how we... Yeah, this is looking okay. It looks like it had some... something going on there. We'll just lube that up real good and put her back together. Um, it, these are kind of expensive, but I know you can get them. Yeah, this had a washer on there. I don't want to lose that one. Now, the oil that I had in here, I had some gear oil in with my uh, diesel engine oil. Can't really smell it anymore, but... Yeah, this one looks okay. It looks like it's got, you know, definitely starting to wear on the bottom there. Well, I'm going to go look for that washer, because we need that. So I'm going to do this a little bit more to the other ones, and uh, we'll move on to the next thing. Alright, as parts come in... like rod bearings and I got my stone uh, this I don't know if I this is the right stone for this but and it kind of did what I was hoping it would do um, it did leave some scratches I really don't care for but I went over with a sharp razor blade on one of these scraper things and just took all the old gasket material off and then the idea with the stone is just to take off the heavy stuff and the high spots and I don't have a tool to get these out I was hoping to get these out with vice grips but I need to get an actual tool for these but I think I want to do right here I can feel this this feels okay but I want to knock this down a little bit I can actually feel that 
Let me knock that. I'm going to do that real quick here. Uh, but after that, what I want to do is uh, I want to get our... Uh, well, we'll clean this piston up. Let's see, that is the number... That would be this piston. We're going to flip this on its side. We'll clean this piston off. And without the rings, we'll set her in there. And we'll see how um, those bearings fit. And we'll throw some plastic gauge on it and see where the bearing spec is. Um, earlier in one of the videos, I said that the, the book spec for the main bearing clearance was, uh, the maximum was 0.45 thousandths, or no, excuse me, it was four and a half thousandths. <laughs> 45 thousandths bearing clearance, she's wore out. Uh, no, four and a half thousandths uh, was the main bearing spec. Um, four. 0.7 thousandths uh, was the uh, is the uh, maximum for the main. The rod bearings have the four and a half thousandths uh, maximum clearance. Um, I have bits and pieces of the manual that I downloaded for this. It's a Cummins manual. I just downloaded off another site that had a PDF of it. Um, so what I'll do is, you know, we'll refer to that and double check it. But what I'd like to do, flip this over a little bit. We'll wipe off that bearing journal down there. And it's got oil and stuff and dirt and whatnot on it. Try and keep it oiled up so it's not, you know, rusting. And then we'll put our piston in there with our connecting rod and we'll uh, we'll throw some plastic gauge on that and see where we sit. You know, since I already have the rear piston cleaned up, I think what I'll do is we'll do the rear one. Because I did this, I checked the clearance on the old bearing and let's see we were right around three probably three and a half that's surprising for a wore out bearing um, again the max is uh, you know we really don't want to get any tighter than four thousandths. So here's what I propose. I'll open up another bearing. I'll slap it in there. We'll slide that pistone in there. And then we'll, uh, well, let's get this off. Okay, I got one half in. Just get it. What I do is I get one in flush here and then I push the other end and it just kind of locks in. And the key is to get the, there's a notch and then you got a notch in the bearing. Something like that. This is the hard way to check your bearing clearances. I'm doing it with pistons that don't have rings on them. And I want to avoid rotating the crank. We're not going to go too crazy. We're not going to torque it down. We're just going to snug her up until we get nice and tight. Tink. Tink. I'm gonna have to take a peek in the manual I got and see if we have a minimum. That looks a little tight. Probably gonna be three thousandths. I don't know if you guys can see. We're about three and a half thousandths on the main bearing or uh, ride clearance there on that one. Let me go grab my manual and see if they have a minimum. So here's part of the manual that I printed off and here's where they're talking about the rod bearing and it looks like we're our, basically our maximum is 45, or, uh, four thousandths or four and a half thousandths. You know one thing I have to fight with my brain is that I'm dyslexic. So things take me longer to figure out. So if I look at this, the more squish the less clearance we have. 
So we're we're less and we're less than or more than two thousands. We're right around three. And it's somewhere around the three thousands. I'd say it probably has three and a half thousands. That's two. Yeah. I think we'll be fine on that rod. I keep dragging us along here. But I'm uh, gonna try to get rid of some of the parts I can get rid of. Or not get rid of, but get on the engine. So with that being said, I'm gonna put the uh, oil pump in. Now a little thing about the oil pumps here is some people have been running um, the uh, 6BT oil pumps or have been talking about running it but according to the manual um, the 6BT and 4BT oil pumps are not interchangeable um, and uh, they say you can run the 6BT oil cooler um, but the oil pumps not interchangeable um, I'm just gonna run my factory uh, I think it's a six plate oil cooler. I'm just gonna run that. Um, I may put an external oil cooler on this and put an oil cooler te uh, oil temp gauge on it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I got nothing wrong with my old oil pump. I just checked the, the uh, gear rotor in there and it looks to be in pretty good shape. So just make sure this is all clean and then oil pump goes right in. I put just a little bit of 80, 90 gear oil on this. Okay, book says 18 foot pounds and we'll go in a crisscross pattern here. I'm gonna go 20. We're gonna go 20. Got a little bit more out of that one. The thing is, is once it clicks, you don't go in, you don't put any more torque on it, because then it'll keep going. Okay. So we got the oil pump on. Uh, the, this is just temporary mounted. I'll get this off here in a moment. Um, but we got parts. And I want to try and install a few pieces. Um, we got a new cam bearing. As you saw earlier in this video, we knocked the old one out, which was, it was a little wore out. Um, I figured, you know, for like five bucks, I think this was five bucks. Brand new cam bearing, and it's the only one that we have to put in there. Figured we might try and learn on ourselves how to put that in. Um, let's see. Oh, this is the uh, assembly lube that Cummins wants you to use, so I got a couple tubes of that. Um... I got a brand new camshaft here. Uh, AG Kits had a brand new camshaft. Look at that thing. Brand spanking new. And it even came with new lifters. $135 for a new cam. And uh, new lifters. That's our old cam. I actually want to get my, uh, uh, <laughs> what does he say, digital? My digital caliper. And just do a quick little, you know, measure a lobe and and see what the difference is um, between this one. Because this one, you can see the lobes are nice and, uh, you know, more gooder. These are kind of rolled over and kind of lazy looking, actually. Oh, I got brand new head bolts. I'm not doing the ARP stuff. Um, we're not building the race engine. If I was doing the, if I did the big pistons like I had originally planned, I would have gone to the kit. But I'm actually right now just trying to save some money. Um, but I got brand new head bolts. 
And they get a whole head bolt kit. I forgot how much that was. I have to look at my uh, receipt, but basically 300 bucks, that's including shipping. Um, got me the water pump, the cam with the lifters, uh, head bolts. And I have one problem here. I ordered the wrong uh, cooling jet tubes. This one uses the short tubes and I got the long ones. The second problem is we were going to take the crank uh, we were going to take the crankshaft back out to re replace the piston cooling tubes. But guess what? Someone put the timing case back on and it's all sealed up. So we'll just run those. The one is missing a tip, but the actual jet itself is still in there and um, we didn't see any signs of wear on that piston there. They all kind of look the same. I apologize for the fan noise, but guess what? It's just getting a little warm in here. Can you see where I'm working? I want to get you guys centered up. You know, good thing it's garbage day tomorrow because I have no room to put any of my garbage now because everything's full because I've been throwing stuff away and cleaning and let's see so for sixty dollars we got ourselves a water pump a gasket of course my kit comes with a new one and we'll take our white washcloth here this might be a high quality part right here look that just goes in there like that Oh, this is just nice looking. And we'll just work her, work her down on both sides. Yeah, it's a half inch. I'll just snug that up. Look, we're getting fancy here. I even hole punched it and threw it in my a binder I had laying around. Okay, water pump mounting screws, 18 foot pounds. Here goes with the torque later. Okay. Let's see if we can put that cam bearing in. I'm gonna get a Sharpie. And the lighting might be a little dark, and I apologize. I didn't spend the money and upgrade the lighting in the shop like I said I was going to. Or at least I told myself I was going to. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line here. So I know where this oil hole is. This is very important. You want to smoke a camshaft and a cam bearing, um, this is how you do it. Install the thing wrong. Um, so, I just marked where the oil hole is, and then on the bearing I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'll tippy tap that in there. So far these parts have been coming from a company called Reliance. I've never seen this manufactured before, but I've also never rebuilt a Cummins. But so far, a lot of these parts look like they're um, real close to original quality, if not better. I mean, this this water pump here actually looks better quality than the Duralast one that I had in there. I had an AutoZone water pump in this for the longest time. Um, and it was starting to, uh, starting to leak, mostly in the winter time. So we got our mark there. And then we just line it up like that. And then we drive it in. We should be lined up perfectly. All we really need is something like that to tap her in. Get her dot lined up there. Get her lined up there. Let's see if we can start it.
flush with the engine block. Nice. We got a new cam bearing. What I'm verifying is to make sure that oil hole, oh yeah, we're good. The thing I like about this new cam bearing is the fact that it's this is nice and chamfered right here. The, the hole for the oiler or for the oil hole. The factory one was really sharp. What you're gonna be looking is right in here. Yep, we only had one cam bearing. I gotta shut this door a little bit. It's kinda noisy. Okay, everything's lubed up now. Well, except for this right here. I'm putting some lubricant plate down here so that it gets on the surface that rides on the thrust bearings. You do that on both sides. So we're lubed up there. One of the bearings, I think it was on this one right here, it had a little speck in the bearing and my finger was catching it and it felt like deep. It wasn't um, like on the surface of the bearing. So I had an extra one. I swapped it out. Just didn't want that in there. Make sure you clean them out. So what we'll do is we'll put a little dollop of lubricant plate down in there. <clears throat> we'll cut this and then we'll cut this. Oh, there we go. Well, yeah, I had to go to the bottom of the dirt pile. I got the woodruff key, or keyway, transferred over to the new cam. Taps in real snug, so that's nice. I cleaned all the oil out of this. We want this dry. We probably could put some red Loctite in there, but I'm I think I'm getting out low. Let's see if I got this low enough. I only got one more section. I gotta pull all that wood out there and there's probably some black widows down there. Good thing I got this press, huh? Eh? Going in. Okay, that's bottomed out. Yep, that's bottomed out. Look at that. Fresh. This is a delicate procedure here. You do want to wipe this can bearing off. I'm just going to wipe out the surface that the cam's going to ride in. My finger, make sure there's no grit. Before we get too much further, um, we need to kind of clock this thing. 
we should have a timing mark here which is right here I don't know if you guys can see it but well, we need to line that up with two timing marks on the crank here or the uh, cam yeah we got two right here those two and then we'll just stick this in and align it so I'm gonna put some looper plate on it okay nice and easy try not to nick the new bearing which I'm already doing a really good good job on doing more to go. And then we can actually reach in there. Grab our uh, retainer. Okay. Where's our dot? The two dots. Let's just gently rotate this. We want this timing mark to be in the middle of these two. go. Now we need to get our retainer and put that in there. That had me sweating. Oh, we got to put this in beforehand, Jimmy. Get it in the groove there, and then like that. Can you tell if I'm sweating? We need to torque that down. I check the bug, I think it's going to be 18. First of all, camshaft gear backlash uh, minimum is 3 thousandths and a maximum of 13 thousandths. That feels about right. Oil pump gear backlash is the same. That feels fine. Yep, as I suspected, camshaft thrust plate cap screws. Expecting this is a half inch. Oh, I need a short extension. Ah, there's my short extension. Click. I like my Craftsman torque wrench, but this is just... Okay, Tubes. I know I said I was going to do the pistons in this video, but this video is already uh, about 30 minutes long. We're going to cut it here. So in the next video, we're going to focus on gap, doing gapping. It's going to be kind of a boring video. Some of you might not want to watch it, but some of you that are into this kind of stuff, if you have an engine need to rebuild, 
you're going to want to watch it. But that video we're going to cover, um, or at least cover my experience in gapping the rings for the book. And then we'll get our pistons put in. And uh, I've already checked all the bearing clearances for the mains. And then I have the, kept those bearings with those rods. So those are all <clears throat> looking pretty good. We'll slap that together. We'll get everything torqued down. Um, I'll probably do that um, when you get the um, connecting rods in. You know, we'll, we'll torque everything all here together. That way we can feel it. Um, and then from there, it'll be putting the cylinder head on and just working our way until we have an engine that will be ready to fire. So yeah, that's it for this video. I'm going to whip this up and have this for you this weekend because I've been kind of spotty on the video. So thank you guys for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Also, check out the links down below. We got uh, International League of Tinkers and Gearheads. Gearheads and Tinkers, whatever. My group that I created, I can't remember the name of it. Down below, um, I'm in a one of the admins for a Cummins 4BT page. Link down below for that. And uh, yeah, check out the links down below. And I'm also going to be working on a Amazon store for this channel so I can share with you um, the things that I buy and use on this channel for these projects um, coming from Amazon. I also have links to the company that I've been buying the parts for this from. Uh, so that'll be down there too. So. Yeah, check them out.